Interesting topic came up from a comment that I thought would be a fun thing to chat about, and I mean that, you know, comments down below and stuff. Um, our, our economic patriotism, I've heard it called, and I think that's a good description for it. So our buying parts from the countries that we are from, and the reason I say that, I, I mean, of course I'm talking American-made, the reason I say it that way is because this audience is not all American. We have quite a few people from Germany, the UK, and Australia that watch the channel. So, you know, why are we so tied up in economic patriotism? And I'm standing in front of this poster because it's circa 1995. I used to have one of those, that exact, even the same color. And I remember Harley's big campaign back then was don't butcher your hog with foreign parts. So let's talk about that. So welcome to the Professional Monkey Channel, <laughs> where we talk about motorcycles, really 99.9% .9 Harley Davidsons, uh, a little bit of RVing, and a little bit of guns. And I, uh, if you're new, welcome. Uh, make sure you hit subscribe. Uh, that does this, like as far as numbers and this, that, and the other. So please make sure you're subscribed. The more people that subscribe, the more people will see it. Blah, 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 blah. Um, this channel is all based on us having a conversation and talking about stuff and um, I don't do memberships and stuff so I, I rely on um, you guys didn't subscribe so that there's ads watched all right so I really I, I got someone been out of shape not not a not a bad guy or anything but I when I bought that Rock Island I bought a Rock Island 1911 45 recently and I did a little video on how much I love rocks and and it really rubbed someone the wrong way. I can't believe you wouldn't have bought a Colt. And, and, and we went back and forth a little bit, not rudely, never disrespectful or anything, but um, just a discussion about, I, you know, I should have bought the American one. I should have bought the American Colt for, and I was like, yes, yeah, twice as much. I paid 600 for my, you know, for my rock and a, a cheap Colt, it's 1200. But it's only six hundred dollars more, and you'd have had the real thing. And I can't believe you would buy a gun that you would hand down to the generations. That's a cheap knockoff. And I mean, this guy was passionate about um, the Colt pistol versus a Rock Island or insert name of other foreign manufacturer, the Turkish STIs, and there's ATI, which is also made in Turkey, I think. And you know, there's a bunch of manufacturers in 1911s around the world. And this this dude, I really offended him by buying a Rock Island. Not a big deal. He's passionate about pistols and stuff. But it really raised an interesting sort of discussion that I wanted to have with everyone. And that is this idea of economic patriotism, right? Which is just a very fancy consultant way of saying, buy American. Because they do. Um, and I think we all do out there. I know there's a lot of Germans out there rolling around in Mercedes and Beamers. Why? I've been to Germany. That's all there is. <laughs> they, they, I mean, there's a, some Japanese stuff, but for the most part, Germans drive German cars. That's just the way they are. And Americans, we drive American cars. Why? Because we're trying to support our own that work in these factories and build these things for a living. And it's kind of not really a thing anymore. Not to be controversial. Um, and, and we'll get into this. Don't get mad yet. Hang on. I'm not saying you shouldn't because I buy American obsessively. Uh, and the, one of the reasons he got so bent out of shape was because I bought a Philippine 1911. Now, I defended that decision by saying, you realize that Rock Island slash Arms Corps is a, is a U.S. allied business. Like, Arms Corps was the company contracted to remanufacture 1911s, Colts. After they made so many of them, the government said, don't make any more. Kind of like they do with Humvees and whatnot. Don't make any new ones, just, just remanufacture on a contractual basis, you know, units. So Arms Corps was one of the companies, if not the only company, that remanufactured Colt 1911s for the U.S. military for a long time. So there's, there's that. Um, but is anything really 100% domestic anymore, no matter where you are? So he got bent out of shape because I bought such an expensive, woo, woo, expensive American-made motorcycle. Is it really? I mean, there's parts in that bike from all over the world. Yes, it's manufactured in the US. Um, and yes, there's a lot of American parts in that bike, but it is largely a global product. Globalization has changed all of that, right? So right behind this camera is my F-250 
that is, of course, yes, built, I think, at the Kentucky plant. As a matter of fact, my F-250 and the wife's Expedition were built in the same plant uh, in Kentucky. But every part in a truck had made the U.S. Globalization. The parts come from all over the world. Um, the reason I opened this video with that poster uh, from the 90s when they used to say, don't butcher your hog with foreign parts, you don't see that slogan anymore, do you? So there were these big posters all over side, all the walls and Harley dealerships. Um, I'm sure it was there until the late 90s, but really, I mean, going way back. Um, and they said, don't butcher your hog with foreign parts because every accessory for the most part was made in the United States. It said made USA, that was the whole big thing uh, when you bought Harleys and, uh, and Harley parts. Not the case anymore. As a matter of fact, I was at the, uh, the Kansas City uh, engine operations plant, I think they called it, but it was it was an assembly line. They built, um, what did they build there? I think the, the V-Rod? What did they build in Casey? Someone comment. It seemed like they built friggin' every, they did build baggers. I think the baggers came from York or something, but when I was there in the, in the uh, late 90s, super early 2000s, they built almost every model at the KC plant. And I went on a tour and it was fantastic. And how they used to do it is they took someone off the assembly line if they wanted to, and they could enter their name to take a tour shift. And that meant it got them off the line for like a week or two. And for that week or two, they gave tours instead of their putting the same screw in the same hole, you know, every day. Keep their sanity and they get to talk to the public. And it made the tour better because you were talking to someone who builds Harleys for a living. So we're walking through the assembly plant and there was a tense moment that was really interesting. Um, I was just in heaven, man. You know, being a, a Harley fanatic, addict, if you will, I'm walking through the plant. I'm just in awe of everything all around me, right? But there was a pair of bikers, man and woman, who were on a cross-country trip, and they, they were, like, riding, and they stopped at the plant. I was there for work and just, like, played hooky for an afternoon and went to the Harley plant. And as we're walking through, the guy, like, made an ass of himself, let's be honest. He stops, and he's like, what the hell? Like, makes a big display, and he sees a stack of brake rotors, and I can't remember how it was identified, but the brake rotors were sitting there as the person's putting them on, and it said like product of Malaysia. How did they, I can't remember how you knew that, but there was something on that said like product of Malaysia. And he's like, I can't believe you're putting foreign parts on a Harley Davidson. And he started throwing this tantrum as we're walking through the factory. And the assembly person, which, which, God love her. She was, you know, not a professional tour guide, not a PR person, not a communications person. She, you know, put handlebars on bikes, you know, 50 some odd weeks out of the year. But for this, these couple of weeks, she's given tours and she stopped. And she said, she nice to say, shut up, but you know, listen for a minute. Um, she's like in the 1970s, early eighties, when Harley was a terrible product, cause it friggin was, I mean, like they had like 20 to 30% defect rates on the on the line so as the bikes came off 20 to 30 percent of those bikes had to go back through the line had to be pulled off they couldn't be shipped so that's that's a lot i mean let's just accept this for reality harley's the 1970s or early 80s there were some quality control issues all right everyone knows that and sales were bad the company was bleeding money like crazy and they couldn't get credit so uh, a lot of you out there, business people, those that aren't, businesses run with a line of credit, right? So they are ordering brake rotors and parts and stuff like that on credit, and then they make payments on those lines of credit, and that's how they just keep running for cash flow, because you can't rely on money coming in the right amounts at the right times so that you can keep parts coming in, so you operate a lot of credit. Harley couldn't get a line of credit. They had bad credit. Um, and the only companies that would give them a line of credit were ones that hadn't been burned yet, which were those outside the States. So this woman very well defensively, but I think justifiably said, when we were building bad bikes and we were had bad credit and we weren't paying bills, this company, and she said the name of the company, gave us credit when no one else would. No one else would sell us brake rotors. And this company in Malaysia did. And so they sh supplied us a, a, a product, a quality product. Like they're, uh, some of you say, I've got a goddamn right rotor. Yeah, I don't know. But they gave us a rotor that was good enough and actually pretty good. 
to meet our specifications to manufacture and they gave it to us on credit so we could keep building bikes. And now, because at this time that I was the, 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 the tour, sales were good, they were strong and they were making a bunch of money. He's like, she was like, you think we should just fire them as a vendor? Like they saved us from the brink of disaster and we are not now just gonna throw them away. They make a much better product than they did then, they make it to the specs we require and because they saved us, we keep them in business. So something to think about why globalization isn't always a bad thing. But that truck is not all American. That motorcycle is not all American. Even though, yeah, I mean, there's, I don't know, I'd be braggadocious here. There's, 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 there's a lot of money <laughs> between that F-250, that CBO, and that Heritage, and the Ultra Limited even here. So I buy American whenever I can. Um, this golf cart that I'm leaning on right now, one of the reasons I bought it and was happy to buy it is it's an easy go. It's built, I think, in Georgia. It's, a, it's an easy go. It's an American product. Now, here's a fun fact. The motor is a Kawasaki. <laughs> so this is, in the world of golf carts, an iconic brand. It's an easy go. It's like probably the most common. It's club car and easy go, your top two. American made by a company named Textron. This one is. Uh, I think, I'm pretty sure it's in Georgia. And the motor is still a Kawasaki motor. Why? Because it's the best motor for the, <laughs> it's the best motor for the application and it's a good price. So I don't think we're ever gonna be able to say, I only buy American, everything else is crap, yada, 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 yada. It just doesn't work anymore, not in 2021, because the whole world is connected now and we're all kind of interwoven, you know, and that kind of crap. But, um, so, cut me some slack because I bought a Filipino pistol. Because <laughs> I, of course, buy American stuff. It's Craftsman tools, guess what? They're not American anymore. That's actually a refrigerator, but you know, for those of you who are guitar nuts, you know, Fender, the, the majority of guitars they sell today, they're made in Japan, they're Squires. Actually, they might be made in China now. But it's, it's hard to just say, I only buy American. No, you don't. I know we all want to, but those days, unfortunately, are kind of gone. You just do the absolute best that you can. And that's the, whole, that's the whole point of this video. We all try to support those who work hard for a living in their own country to try and put food on the table, and maybe go on vacation once a year and, and, and be able to pay their mortgage, right? So we all do that because we all try and buy the products from the countries you're in. And the Germans are buying Beamers. They're not as expensive there, by the way. Um, I'm sitting on two Fords, three Harleys, and an easy-go golf cart. Uh, the reality is all of them have foreign parts. And yeah, I bought a Filipino 1911. And I carry Glocks anyway. And those are Austrian for the most part. And I'm increasingly investing in uh, uh, pistols that I used to, not investing, buying pistols I used to carry a long time ago. When I was Poe, my first pistol was a Taurus. Um, and the last two that I bought have been Tauruses because they're, they're good again. And it's an American, no, it is an American. It's like, what is Taurus? Someone answer that. Man, they don't make any damn sense. They're either in Brazil, but the guns said Miami on them, which when you live in South Florida, kind of like that. And this is a side note. Economic patriotism is really hard in certain parts of the country like South Florida. Why? Because such a huge percentage of the population isn't American. They are now, they're proud citizens. Like by a lot, I mean seriously, like we, we have an immigrant population down here that, that is proud to be American. They fly American flags more than, than you know, uh, most of us boring ass gringos. But, they're not from here, so they aren't as obsessed with Harley Davidson. So they sell a whole lot of Hondas and Kawasaki's and whatnots down here, Triumphs and Beamers and whatnot. So that's the interesting side note. But before I forget, today is Wednesday at, I don't know, it's like noon my time, one o'clock my time. Day after tomorrow will be Friday at 8 p.m. Eastern. Me and Mrs. Monkey will go live for another live stream chat. If you haven't done a monkey live chat, please do. It's fun. We typically do stupid things. We basically just sit on camera and have a lot to drink and laugh with all of you, chat, whatnot. We read comments as best we can. Um, we try and do a giveaway or two uh, of little things around there just for fun. It's just, it's just a good time. I mean, a lot of us are stuck at home and don't have as much to do these days, you know, outside the house. It's getting better though. Um, so. Every other week at eight o'clock on Fridays, we get together and have a bunch of whiskey and make fools of ourselves. Somehow YouTube allows that. They need to increase their standards. 
<laughs> so, um, thanks all of you out there. I really appreciate you watching. Make sure you're a subscriber again. Um, we'll talk day after tomorrow. Take care of each other out there, and uh, bye.